Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Mr. Nichols. Well, good morning there, buddy. Uh, good morning, Eileen. How are you? How is everyone? You guys are quiet. Apparently, no one's paying attention. Nobody's paying attention. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's responding. They just they just jumped on, and that was it. Did you guys enjoy Mega Camp? Yeah, there was some good stuff in there. Um, hell of a drive to the Ritz Carlton each day, but. Yeah, I, I had to opt for the home office experience because of my kid. It was it was it was nice to not have to drive to the Dove Mountain, but it was definitely difficult to keep him out of my office when I had calls going on. Undoubtedly. Well, the good thing is, is we still had tons of notes, which was good. I really really enjoyed the Josh team's portion showing some of the technology tapping on the back end, which lets me know that there's a lot more coming to the agent side of it, which is going to be pretty cool. I also yeah, I enjoyed the uh, interview we did with Facebook too. Yeah, that was good. I mean, it, it shows really it good. shows the power of the company, the fact that we have a, a direct partnership and they're the we're the only people that would that are at that level. Would say they're in business with. Right, right. That's huge. That's real huge. Hmm. Where the hell does it download to? How about you, Mr. Nichols? What was your favorite takeaway? Actually, the very first day, the first discussion with uh, Gary Keller and uh, and uh, and Jay for about two hours, I found that absolutely amazing. Uh, very informative. I got a lot out of it. You know what I love about this, the way they did Mega Camp this year, is we can go back and rewatch and re-listen to everything. That's good. I've done that a few times. I've been watching the script off a couple of times, and it's kind of made me think we should probably do some stuff like that in this call. I think that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Having one objection and two people handling it, I think it'll be a benefit. I'll start putting something together, and I think that'll be cool. Yeah, that's a really cool – that's a uh, kind of quick throwdown way to do script practicing. Yeah, it, it gets engagement, but it also gets, you know, participation, whereas, you know, everyone else in the room will – like, hey, vote for who you thought won. Right, right. Knowing me, I'll find a way to get some kind of surprise reward or some trinket or gift card. Or... They fall into my lap and I give them away. You know, also, I had a very, very informative uh, talk with, uh, with uh, Jesse Rojas and didn't know this. There's a company out there called... Uh, mm -hmm wiki wiki buy yeah. and you go you go on and you get all these different coupons and i've been struggling with the fact that zoom my my free zoom account i can only get 40 minutes into a meeting right and there's some really uh, it, it's wonderful but i needed to expand it so i expanded to the pro which was 150 dollars but jesse told me to check out wiki uh Wiki buy, and I found a coupon there that Good gave morning. me fifty percent off. So I got the whole year pro for seventy four dollars and ninety five cents. Yeah, I've got the Wiki buy and the Honey app applets on my Google Chrome, and they're the two mm -hmm. best things to save money. So, mm -hmm. not a sponsored plug, but definitely use them. Definitely recommend them because there's no reason to pay full retail if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Did you guys miss me? Because I missed you. I did. I did. We all hey, missed Mara. you. Hey, Teresa. Morning. Good morning, Annette. 
Good morning. Those of you who did Mega Camp, I want to hear what your favorite script you took away from because I know you wrote something down. I know you did. Yeah. Look at that. I'll oh start God. it off. You guys are share. Larry and Robin are using the same uh, same room now. Who? Larry and Robin are you? They're working together in the same room. They are. It's teamwork right there. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just said. <laughs> so the one thing I took away, I really liked it, was the the question they had the script off. It was the second or third. It was the third grouping of them where we talked about. Hey, I'm not sure that you are a luxury buyer. I keep getting these postcards from somebody I know who is a luxury buyer. I want to go with you, but I'm confused. I think that was a uh, an aha moment for me as they didn't, no one in the scripting would ask the question we always ask, what's important about that? Get to the root cause of it so you can overcome the root objection. But I loved what Jason Abrams said. It wasn't even in the scripting. He says, luxury is not just a price point, it's an experience. And as a luxury agent, I'm going to make sure that you get the top-notch experience, concierge service the entire way. I love that. I love that that line in there where you said, you know, luxury is not just a price point, it's the experience. I'm going to give you a luxury experience. Because what's different between a $500,000 house and a $100,000 house? Or $100,000. Or $100,000. Just it's just a number. It's got maybe a few extra bedrooms and a better view, but it's the same thing. We want to sell it. We want to engage with our clients in the same level, be excited, regardless if they're buying a hundred thousand or a million. They might be a different clientele. You might have to, you know, put up with a little bit more pomp and circumstance, but the ultimate thing is why are we giving a luxury experience to everyone? Experience is worth giving. So I, that was my big takeaway from it. And I actually learned that yesterday because I was driving across from the east side to the north side at night and had nothing else to do. So I actually put on the scripting challenge on my phone and just let it play through my Bluetooth speakers. And I picked up some of the, some of that from there. So I definitely recommend doing that if you guys haven't. So I'd like to hear some of yours. Yeah, I, was, I don't have like, like scripting pieces, but there were some facts and figures that just alarmed me, if you will, to to just put a, an exclamation point on why you sh we should be absolutely all over this Facebook advertising stuff. Um, one of the key items was um, when talking about virtual home tours, virtual open house, on-demand home tours, or on-demand open house stuff, there are an average of 15 million people searching these items daily. So, the point is the video stuff that we've talked about and putting video stuff up, 54% of commuter uh, of consumers are trying new brands as in, or a new vendor that they have never used before because they have the time to look around with this whole thing and being home more. So 54% of consumers are saying that they're actually trying new and different brands. So again, an opportunity to put a foot in the door and be the new experience for someone. Um, there's a, a good slug line here. Facebook is the doorway to current potential clients. Um, here's the other one that just threw me for a loop. 800 million people are live streaming daily. 800 million people. So 65% uh, of home buyers are, are listening, uh, are actually listening to their friends talk about stuff. You know, video leads to video and video uh, leads to views. So um, anyway, the long, you know, long and short of it is the Facebook advertising and live streaming and stuff like that is absolutely a hot spot for real estate marketing right now. And, and really, so, so is Zoom, you know. Zoom well, yeah, use, yeah, that's live stream. This combine is the two of them. Pardon me? So you can definitely combine the two of them. You can live stream from Zoom into Facebook. Right. That's one of the reasons why I upped my membership with Zoom. Yep. So that's just an exclamation point that I got out of it, that there's that much activity taking place. And that Facebook advertising is truly, what was one the other example? Um, uh, the one team, there was a team that did uh, a lot of, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, testing, if you will. 
uh, for the Facebook stuff. And $1,000 worth of advertising over a period of time set up 140,000 in GCI for that team. $1,000 worth of advertising set up $140,000 worth of GCI, not volume business, GCI, commission income for his yeah. team. Yeah. And that was over like a three month period. That's pretty amazing returns. Yeah, $4.6 million in sales. Off of $1,000 worth of Facebook ads. Now, of course, the other thing he said is the, the key to all of that is in the follow up. And so he also was, a, he actually gave us his Facebook lead smart plan. So as soon as they get a Facebook lead, the smart plan goes in place. And the whole purpose of that smart plan was simply to get the person that had, uh, had responded to come to a voice conversation. So it's texting, email, and a phone call. And they run that until they finally make contact with that individual. But that's the that's a Facebook uh, or the, the smart plan rather that he has set up. It's a pretty simple one. It's seven days, fourteen touches, automated email, automated uh, you know text messaging, and so on. But it's simply a seven day attempt to have a conversation with the person. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. I, I, that was like my I think that was my favorite uh, piece was the interview with Facebook of the whole whole thing, with the exception of Gary, of course. So that was definitely a, a big part of what I, all the classes I was part of is the follow-up is where we're missing a lot of it. There's no point in generating leads if you're not going to do anything with them. One call is not going to be enough. Two calls is not going to be enough. Three calls is not going to be enough. And oftentimes we forget that they're in our systems and it's been months. Like I can tell you, I went through my phone and this is a weird situation. I went through my phone. I came across somebody I met on a dating site many, many months ago, years ago, almost. Never talked to her, but she was on my phone. Like it was part of my DTD2 calls. I skipped it because I thought it'd be awkward. This is full exposure. I skipped it. This is months ago. I skipped it. Guess who sent me a Facebook message this morning at 6 a.m.? Hey, when you get a chance, can we talk about real estate? That's killer. That's great. And it was one of those like, that was a reminder. No, ma no matter how awkward we think the situation is, we can elevate ourselves beyond that and have that conversation. But no joke, at six o'clock this morning, I got a Facebook message from her. Her name is Andy. And it, easy conversation. Hey, you know, we're looking to buy a house here, you know, next year, I don't know what another process and just kind of walk her through it. Sent her my app, sent her my contact information, got hers, put her in my CRM, like I'm gonna follow up with it. But it really did change. Like it, it was kind of funny where the next, cause I, she sent me a Facebook message, I texted her. She's like, oh, I didn't know you had my phone number. I just left it at that. But it was one of those like, don't don't skip over somebody because you feel like it'd be awkward. You feel like you don't have the opportunity to create an engagement or you've got, had a bad experience in the past. We never know what's changed. We don't never know what's happened. We can only see our side of things. We don't see theirs. And oftentimes people completely eliminate that that awkward situation or that has, you know hesitation. Like Larry said, you know, all the consumers out there that are looking at new opportunities, they're looking for new vendors, they're looking for new realtors, looking for new people to service their needs. Now's the time to reassert ourselves. I, I haven't been using my Facebook business page forever and I've been using my personal one. And they said, no, you need to use a business per pay, Facebook page for business because it, it adds professionalism to it and your personal one. And the algorithm is different. And yeah, algorithm is way different because you get, you're searched better that way. So if they're searching realtor, and I did just from that, I got two leads this last week, just from that alone, by opening up my business page and putting a post on there. And it changed the algorithm. And I, then I went and I added more people. I went and shared it and said, you know, please like my page. I do 50 at a time and I send it through Messenger. But it was, there were some key takeaways I, I got from Mega Camp, and the follow up was definitely one of them follow up and follow through. So I'd love to hear somebody else's what, you know, what kind of scripting moments, any kind of information. Well, in that follow-up, I think we're all always looking for something new to say. And I liked that they, I think they 
emphasize that, you know, we're the source of information on so much of this, you know, real estate is changing so much and so fast. And there's so many crazy stats and things out there now that we should be educating our folks. And that's a great, every time you call someone, we should have something new and interesting, you know, educational that we could share with them. So I thought that was a good tip. Yeah, we've always, the market's ever moving, ever changing. People don't know these things. And Unfortunately, they rely on the information they get from Credit Karma and Credit Zuru or whatever the other random credit sites are. It tells them that how to buy a house. No, that's not how you buy a house. Well, we've also been handed, you know, I don't want to say it's a gift because it's really a problem, but we've been handed a, a, a piece of information or whatever um, that just about everybody I talk with, they don't know and they're surprised by it. And that's the inventory problem. So people, you know, the people who are just, you know, going about their business day and not even worrying about real estate, or they have no idea that we're in this crunch or this have, you know, this this tight inventory. Uh, yesterday, the day before, or the, uh, the the stats just came out. Do we, are we know our inventory is now twelve hundred and thirty three houses. It's just nuts. So that for me is always that it's a built in sense of urgency. Hey, you know, if you're really thinking about trying to buy, you know, we need, you know, we need to look around some, but we've got a real inventory problem. So if something comes up and it's something that you think you, you're looking at, you, you know, you think you might like it, you need to go see it immediately yeah. because it'll be off the market in three days. Yeah. One of the deals Robin's working house went under contract the day it went live, fell out. She got a notification from the, the agent reach because i'm part of that deal with her so i in the group chat she's like hey we gotta go see it today let's go check it out we had an appointment at six this is like 11 o'clock in the afternoon and three two or three o'clock yesterday she's like i'm so sorry the seller accepted another offer and doesn't want any more showings they had four more offers that day again to put it back on the contract before we had agreed to go see it and they were like they were still holding it for more offers and they got a cash offer i guess it just blew them out of the water one of the most powerful things I think we've heard lately is from that investor guy, though, who said, if people are concerned about price point right now, get them away from that and talking about the important thing today is to get a piece of this cheap interest rate, of this cheap money. It's not how much you're going to pay right now. This, this interest rate is allowing you to have so much more purchasing power. So it's not he was talking about when you talk to investors but it should work with everyone right because people are concerned oh i'm paying top dollar right now aren't i paying too much do i really want to buy right now and so to me overcoming that objection with this, this historical record low never seen it before interest rates so the key is to get the best offer in there you know when people think they're going high because you're still getting an incredible deal because of the interest rate yeah, the consumers out there that, like Larry said, we're not educating them well. We're not giving them the advice and having that ability to talk and say, hey, we are we are in a place where this is a dire need. Everyone still thinks that this is a starting point and going down. Like this is, oh, we get to negotiate off of that price. No, we get to negotiate onto that price. You know, what why, would I, why would I pay more than they're asking? Well, because yeah. you want to buy the house, don't you? Well, one of the comments made by somebody uh, the mega camp was we learned that everybody moved in you know families became bigger in the house right and now they're looking for a bigger home well if they're looking for a bigger home and they have a small home but there's people on the market who want to buy their first home this is the ample opportunity to take advantage of cheap money uh, a hot market low inventory and and make the move yeah, the other the other alarming thing to me, and I I just was stunned. I have, I have a new potential buyer at five hundred thousand, and I got their pre call yesterday, and the pre call says on it interest rate not to exceed three percent, which means he's going to be in the twos. <laughs> I'm just like, I mean, we we refied a month ago, and then we the best we could get was three and a half, and of course, right a week or two after that, everything took a dip again, you know. Yeah, but, in December, uh, I plan to refine my because I'll be six months in December. Yeah. Actually, six months next month. Uh, bought it in April, so November. So, and then yeah. refi. I'm at two point nine nine, and I'm going to refi down, which is insane. So Plus yeah, equity now from the remodel. So yeah. anyway. money is you know, you know mortgage money is so cheap right now. That's exactly what Dick said. That's a selling point to your buyers. Look, you know, 
what's I, I, I have I'll have to sit down and calculate it out, but we need to we need to calculate out for the conversation piece what what is the uh, for every thousand dollars it's what three dollars now in the mortgage payment. So, I mean, if you need to calculate it out again, like against like a two point seven five percent interest rate or something like that. It's have to do the math. But you know, the prior when we were three and a half or four, I think it was about four dollars. Uh, a thousand. So if you went five thousand dollars up, oh my gosh, you have a twenty dollar a month increase in your payment for this five thousand dollars, reducing that five thousand dollars that they're going. Well, I don't want to pay another five thousand dollars for this house. You're going to pay twenty dollars a month. Yeah, reduced to the ridiculous. Reduced so to the ridiculous. So you know, you're you're telling me for five dollars a week you wouldn't buy the house that you want for less than a dollar a day. You can, Larry, you, you can you can a thousand dollar conversion with that equals to that's the price of a of a quarter pounder <laughs> that is the price of a quarter pounder yeah no kidding no, you have to turn things into what resonates actually people take it to <laughs> you're going to take it to the ridiculous that's the price of a happy meal yes <laughs> back to less than a happy meal they've gone up you can't even buy a cup of coffee for five bucks McDonald's sells it for a buck. Mara put in the chat the search the author and smart plans for Tyler Shields. If you did not know, they have released smart plans community where you can actually search and look for smart plans out there that are being shared by other agents across the nation. So you don't have to think of them yourself. You don't have to come up with them yourself. You just have to go and customize them. It's fantastic. There are people out there that have built their business, Marty Miller, all he does is build smart plans for agents. I don't have a phone number. I don't have an email. I don't have an address. I met you at the golf course. All these things he's got smart plans for. Use the system's intelligence for you. And that's what it's all about. I don't want it to replace you, but I want, it, I want you to be an, an agent that's enabling the tech. No, that's, that's, you know, this stuff is the, the, that, that uh, uh, reach out, the touch communication automated. So you can set about your day dealing with your existing clients, whatever and so on, but just, you know, plug and play, plug and play, plug and play on these smart plans and let them do all the talking for you, text messaging, and then reminding you, oh, today is the phone call day. I've got to reach out and call them. But the other day is the email. The other day is the text message. That's the touch being made for you without you even doing a thing. So this, yeah, the one, Tony, is it Tony Shields? Uh, Tony Shields, it's with Mara, but Tyler Shields. Tyler. T Tyler Shields, that's the one. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, that's that smart plan. It's a simple smart plan. It's seven days, fourteen touches, but it's built. Just go in and customize it to you. Done. Now all of a sudden, every Facebook lead you get, you automatically plug them into that smart plan until you actually talk to them. Then you can take them off of that, and move them into the next one. Nurture. All right, welcome to the call, Cindy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Did you Happy did Friday. You enjoy Mega Camp? I'm sorry? Did you enjoy Mega Camp? Uh, I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I was just kind of in and out. It's okay, it's recorded. We can go back and check it out, which is great. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Yeah, I was I had bins are due and stuff, getting ready for a listing and so. I love seeing you back in activity. I'm, I'm trying. I'm getting there. That's all you need. A little bit of accountability. Get your button gear. <laughs> Weird how that works. I know, right? Yep. So I thought I'd pop in here for a little bit. So anyone else got some takeaways? I know Robin went now that she's back with us. My biggest takeaway was do more. Do more. <laughs> uh, I was on a leadership call with Gary and he said that, you know, up yours was his saying the whole time. Not up yours in that sense, but up your goal, up your activity, up your element. How can we increase engagement? Up yours, up your, up your engagement. I was like, I like that. But I really loved it at the end when Josh Teams was like, don't bet on red. Don't bet against red. That was good. That was good stuff. I'm going to make a shirt. Don't bet against red. 
Teresa, how are you? Did I wake you up? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I've I, uh, been up since five working on stuff on a computer. Gotcha. So. Um, already. I can tell y'all are a little bit late and it's go four days without a call or three days, was it three days without a, a morning call? Can't have that. Can't have that. You guys are dying on me. Oh, we, we missed you. I know that. So. Well, Jason jumped in a couple of times. He was texting me. He's all, any call this morning? I was like, you guys can have a call. I will not be there, unfortunately. I, I, I trust that y'all are able to do so on your own. Self-guidance is a good thing, but it's always good to have a little bit of whip cracking so thank you all for participating when you did and i like how they talked about pouring into people and i couldn't help but think of you because you pour into us so much every day and we hope that you feel some of that back i do thank you so much and i, I think that goes to the whole culture of our entire company is pouring into people and as we talked about one of the follow-up calls we were it was a uh, in the leadership realm we were talking about recruiting and it goes right in line with follow-up and just any lead for a client is a care call. Just call to see how there are, they are. You don't even need to discuss real estate, but you just need to check on people. Even now we're eight months, nine months into this pandemic and people are, we seem to be getting along. Everything has seemed to kind of go back normal ish. We have a little bit of hiccups here and there, but there, there's still people in pockets in this world that are still extremely isolated. You know, they're fear ridden, they're house stuck. So what are we doing to help, you know, pour into them? So that's one thing I'm going to start doing more of is I'm going to just call, I'm going to go back to care calls and just call in a check in on people. So, and I hope you guys feel the pour in for me and it overflows your bucket so that you can pour into multiples. That's the whole point. Let us flow onto the world so that we can change the tides of fate. Wow. I jumped in at just the right inspirational <laughs> moment. <laughs> There's one in every call, isn't there? I, I, I helped some people and um, eventually, you know, they're, they were very appreciative and eventually, you know, they're going to be buyers. Um, and yesterday I took my laptop and files and things. So while I was at this empty um, townhouse and showed it to uh, two different families, um, I got a lot of work done, but these families were, were renters and they're not quite ready to buy yet, but they were just so appreciative that I'm helping them and help them find some places because rental homes are kind of hard to find right now. I helped 10 different families um, this week find, find their, their rental homes and every single one of them you know, was just overwhelmed that I actually helped them and because they said nobody else would. And um, so I've got, you know, got some potentials there and all of them said, oh yeah, I'm going to pass your name around, blah, blah, blah. It just, it was nice. Uh, a couple of them were in situations, um, bad history experiences, uh, bankruptcy because of bad marriages, whatever. And so it was nice just to really get on a very personal level and encourage them, tell them, you know, I'll work with them. I'll put them in touch with, you know, a credit repair uh, company through a couple different lenders. And, and they were, they were very touched. So I had, um, Maybe it didn't make a lot of money with those 10 right now, but I, I felt wonderful to be able to help them. So. You're empowered. You're, yeah. you're, you, you feel good. One of the best feelings in the world is giving back to others. Yeah. Own your morning, great. own your day. I love that, Mara. Own your morning, own your day. Yeah. That's, why we, that's why we have been consistent in this call for the better part of this year. And I, I, I hate to say it is when I started with Keller Williams, there was a power hour call on the Keller Williams roster when it, and the, the daily calendar and I never knew what it was. I never knew what it was in there. And I, I asked everybody when I started, what is this? What is this? Where is it at? Where can I get to it? And it kind of was just on there as a placeholder. No one was ever servicing it. So that's why this came about when I was like, I'll take it over and I'll do it. We started it in person last year here in the 
here at the market center a couple of days a week, but I love that we've done it every day, every business day. It's not just a scripts and role play. It's a mindset call. It's a morning ramp up call. It's a, it's a get your life right. So we can own our mornings so that we can own our days. All I hope is that you take some of the stuff we do here. And I really love how, you know, Jason Carlton said it during a, the first day at mega camp is education without implementation is nothing more than entertainment. So if you're just on here to listen and take some feedback and not do anything with it, you're just here for entertainment. You're wasting your time. Not only mine, but everyone else's. So do something with it. You know, their, take, their challenge take, was kind of incredible, Dan. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, go ahead. Was that bit about um, making sure you're working on your priorities first thing every day rather than somebody else's. And I just thought that was really powerful to think, like, you know, I brought up that quote somebody had given us to say no to something. And that's kind of that same mentality. Is what are we going to say no to so that we can focus on what's really important to us? And I think as solo agents, we have a hard time with that because we're not just doing the lead gen, we're doing everything. And so those logistics can really mess up our day if we have, you know, we're working on a deal and there's a closing and there's chaos. Um, but if we can try to, if we screw up our morning and we, like you always say, try to replace it in the, or not try, but replace it in the afternoon, <laughs> even if it's not the whole time, you know, I think that Again, they're at the point that we're, we're never going to be perfect. And so the other part I really loved was, hey, um, the guy who said, oh, you want to create um, consistent lead gen. Well, that's just too big a goal. You got to chunk that down into something tiny or creating the 411. Just say you're going to put it on your calendar. That's the first little domino. You know how they're talking about the domino? And so I think maybe in this call, we could maybe focus a little bit on how can we chunk things into smaller pieces that we could actually, you know, get done. And well, I just thought that, that was one of the more powerful things they should. I'll start the challenge off. I do need to have a hard stop at 8.30 on this call today. So here's, here's your challenge. Start chunking it down. Raise your hand if lead generation is on your calendar. So half of us. Is this call on your calendar every day? So what do you do right after this call ends? Get organized for lead gen. Okay, when does lead gen start? I start at nine. At nine? Right at nine? Okay. Would it be helpful if we had like a Zoom room you guys could log into all at the same time and do your lead gen together? At 9 a.m.? I don't know. What do you exactly. guys think? That one person talked about how she did get a lot of energy doing it with others. I don't know how you guys feel. I feel like when we actually buckle down and do it, you do get energy from talking to people. Yeah. You, so, okay, on your calendars, put Legion. I want at least two hours blocked out, 9 to 11. If you can do 9 to noon, great. If you can't, 9 to 10, 9 to 9. I want a solid hour, golden hour, golden half hour, whatever you're going to put on there and commit to it. And then set an expectation in your lead, in, in your calendar event. Call 10 people, contact 10 people, contact 20 people, call 50 people, whatever you can accomplish in those. And then get the daily, the bold dailies. I'll, I'll get the link and I'll put it up on our website where you can actually daily you know, track your results. When you're calling people, you know, check it off, just put a check mark. Like on mine, I literally have little check marks on my notebooks of how many people I've talked to. Because I've got a daily goal for myself too. And I, if I don't hit that, I don't go home. If I got things left on my calendar, they get done. So put it on your calendar first and foremost, have it repeating, constantly repeating. And that'll be your first domino is put it on your calendar, but have a set time to commit to it. Because that lead follow-up follows in there too. And I guarantee if you have two hours on your calendar blocked out and you can't do anything, you're going to find time to fill that space. If you hate calling, I mean, I know when I'm starting out, I'm like, I can't just do calls all the time. And I know it's hard with COVID, but if you did visits to businesses or you did door knocking or just come up with a kind of lead gen, I think we all need to mix it up a little bit because the point is just to keep doing it, right? Just keep doing anything <laughs> um, to keep talking to people. I like it. All right, my friends, well, I've got to run. I will be on phones, emails, texts all day. So if you need me, I will be at the KLP building here shortly. If you're doing Ignite starting on Monday, I'm going to drop off some books at KLP right now. 
and then they have them here at the JV office. All of you have kind of gone through it before, but if you want to, if you missed it and get a book, you can get one. Other than that, tell a friend, invite a friend, let's get going. You guys have a great Friday. Thank you for wearing your red shirts. I love seeing the Red Nation. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. Thanks.